and now, a DM that gets emotional, angry, and yells when his players don't do what he wants them to. Eventually, the players give up and intentionally make it worse, leading to OP's mom having to come in and save him. Roll post. So this was this past Monday. I have never had such an odd and terrible RPG experience before, and I've played RPGs, and D&D specifically, for decades. Background. I have recently gotten back into D&D after an extended period. I used to be a forever DM from 3.0 all the way through 3.5, didn't care for 4th edition so I gave up the hobby. Trying to get back into it, my wife and I hit up the local game shop and played a few one-shots. Out of that came an invitation from a fellow player to join a group starting a brand new, long-running campaign. He seemed cool, so we went to the first session. This is where the fun began. To save time, I will introduce the characters as they become relevant, rather than dumping all the intros on you all at once. So we begin our story as my wife and I arrive. Goliath, who was the host of our group, and the dungeon master are already there. They were in the living room with no overhead lighting, and the Goliath is lighting candles so that we can see the card table that he set up. This was already a bit more intimate of a setting than I was expecting, but we roll with it and go sit down. Before we can even take off our coats and sit down, the DM spoke. The first words out of the DM's mouth. I need to see your character sheets cause this is a homebrew world and this campaign will go to level 20, and certain race class combinations are not allowed as we will be playing this campaign for years, and you have to commit to the whole game right now if you want to play with us. All this was said without the guy breathing even once. That was a bit overwhelming to be hypothetically forced into a years long commitment before we even sat down. Further, we came with pre-made level 1 characters because the DM indicated any core 5e class race. The literal words used by the DM in the Facebook chat were, no restrictions. They had already held a session zero, and later we found out there were actually four of them. So suddenly, the DM totally changed the options. I'm all for a good session zero, but just one should be enough under most circumstances. Four session zeros indicates either internal struggle within the group, or the DM having no clue what he's doing. My guess is this story will have a lot of both moving forward. Unfortunately, both our characters passed inspection. The DM got super excited that my wife was playing a dragonborn. He immediately started to tell her that she grew up on a specific continent and her egg, she was playing a male, but he ignored this repeatedly, was mutated by an evil warlock with poisons, and all dragonborn are evil and part of an evil army that she grew up in, and still owes allegiance to the evil warlock, etc. This was totally against her neutral good alignment, acolyte background, and deity. My wife, still being a bit new, did not know what to do with this info dump and got a little upset, saying that she wanted to be a good cleric, and the PHB did not say that she had to be evil. The DM said, too bad, this is my world. In hindsight, we should have walked out right then and there. Okay, so there are two major schools of thought here. There is an element of this being the DM's world that they crafted, so certain races would have their own place in lore. And there are others that will bring up the fact that the player characters should be allowed to be unique as they are the world's main characters. At the best of times, these two desires are not at odds, and while I can understand people who say that the DM is still well within his bounds, I personally have a hard time relating to a DM that exercises this level of control. I'm not a fan of this DM style very much and it makes it harder to be on his side. The DM loved my rogue character and backstory. It fit his magical realm. The DM starts telling us about the world and how he has been developing the world for a long time, and each and every NPC we will meet has had a long and detailed backstory. He is so excited to let us play in his magical realm, and just knows that we'll love it so much. 
So then, the Sorcerer, Paladin, and Gnome Bard arrive. Gnome Bard was straight up a ripoff of Sam Regal's character from Critical Role. He even named him Scanlan. Turns out the Bard needed to actually make his character since he changed classes since the last Session Zero they had. For some reason, the DM has no issues with the straight up copyright infringement. Even with the weird arcane rules of this world that he has lovingly birthed. After over 30 minutes of idle chit chat while Gnome Bard has the finishing touches made, we start. I shall now narrate exactly how this all went down. DM, you are all on a boat. You all received a letter from a mysterious person that said you must come to the swamp city of Tictitilis to meet Illuminaris. It was signed by a mysterious person none of you know, and was signed with a single large X. Me. Okay, so how large is this boat? Can you describe it for us? The DM draws a boat on the grid map. It's a large trading vessel, about 50 feet long. You are on the deck with everyone else. Goliath. Okay. I ask the captain how much longer till we arrive in Tiki Titty Oily. The DM, visibly upset a player mispronounced the city name. It is pronounced Tick Tittleus. Do you need me to spell it so you can write it down? Me. Okay, anyways, I think it's a legitimate question to the captain. How much longer till we arrive? DM. Everyone make a deck save. Me, wife, and Goliath. For what? Make a deck save or die. The whole party's like, what the hell? We all roll, but only sorceress and wife succeed. DM. You all see the sorceress fly 20 feet through the air and land on her feet like a cat as the boat crashes into the dock, destroying it completely. The captain and wife are crushed between the boat and the wall. Me. What the hell? Did sorceress cast Featherfall or something? What's going on? How much damage did it deal that wife is dead? We are level 1. You can't throw save or death at us like that without warning or a way to avoid it. I allowed a deck save. Wife, yeah, but I'm a big dragon man in armor. My dex is one of my lowest stats. That's really not fair. She failed too, points at Sorceress. I really don't know why the DM is doing this. Making the first roll in the game a save or death is terrible design objectively. Either they succeed and nothing changes, or they die and the game is over. The best possible scenario here is if the DM planned for them to die early as a plot point, but even that is awful, unsatisfying railroading that only leads to cheapening the weight of death. I think I was right earlier when I said the DM does not know what he's doing because there's no good reasoning behind his actions. So we've established so far that the DM is running around like a headless chicken at best, and being unnecessarily petty for no reason at worst. At least, it's not gonna get any worse. DM. Yeah, but she's the main character and has high level magic items. Never mind. It can, in fact, get so much worse. So not only are we dealing with a DM that will kill without any rhyme or apparent reason, but he also has a stripe of favoritism. It should not be a surprise that choosing one person to be the main character in a D&D party is the wrong move in almost every single game, but here we are. Consistent, selective focus and treatment towards one player and ignoring the rest is the not-so-secret recipe to getting everyone else to check out and stop caring. This is awful, but it's made critically worse by the fact that the type of person to do this is usually not above making other terrible DMing choices, leading to absolute train wreck stories like this one. What makes this DM so special is that he is so blatant about it. He's not even trying to cover it up. I would have guessed that the DM was young or inexperienced, but at least two of the players are married, so we're genuinely just dealing with a case of preventably bad DMing. Me, bristling at the main character comment, Come on man, we wanna play, but be fair. Also, do our characters know about the magic items? No. Okay, fine. Wife calls on her evil god and succeeds. Me. So, moving on. Where is the rest of the crew? There is no other crew. Wife, who has some sailing experience, 
You said that this was a large 50 foot long boat. You can't crew a boat like that alone. There's no one else on the boat. But wow, no one's mourning the captain. I expect the evil cleric to not care. But the rest of you? We didn't know the captain. And why is there no one else on the boat? Do we know where the crew is or what happened to them? The boat is still crashing into the docks. Don't you want to get off? Gnome Bard. How? There's a ramp on the docks up to the deck of the boat. You mean the docks I just crashed into and destroyed? Are you getting off or not? Me. Okay, we get off the boat using the Deus Ex Machina ramp. Okay, you walk up to the sorceress and are in awe of her and her nimbleness. She's otherworldly and beautiful, and she has a 25 points in charisma. I roll my eyes in obvious disgust. Personally, if I were the sorceress, I would feel uncomfortable, oddly fetishized, and ask the DM to please stop insisting on my character. While we're here, I would love to read a story from the perspective of someone who had the DM simp over their character. If that's you, drop one in my subreddit, I'll give it a look. But it must feel so awkward and gross. Honestly, I can't imagine how creeped on you must feel having the one person in control of the game gawk over your in-game character. Okay, never mind, she's into it. Sorceress sees my eye roll. First thing she says in character, I see your greedy eyes looking at my jewels. Keep your eyes to yourself or you'll get a fireball to the face. Me out of character. Fireball? We're first level. Maybe you are. Me in character. What jewels? I don't know what you mean, madam. I know you're a thief. You're playing a rogue. All rogues are dirty thieves. You cannot pickpocket my magical items. Do not presume to know me or my character. But I have not told you or done anything that would lead you to think my character is in any way dishonest or going to steal from you. I am not even playing a thief-like character. You are wrong. All rogues are evil thieves. I roll my eyes at her again. To the DM. So, we are off the boat. What do we see? You are in the city of Tick Titulus. It's a swamp village. Wife. Who are we supposed to be looking for again? Illuminaris. Okay, do we see Lumiere or Cogsworth for that matter? It is Illuminaris. Do you need me to spell it so you can write that down? Dude, have you played D&D before? This is standard stuff, my man. Players are going to constantly mispronounce your NPC names or give them nicknames they can remember. Lighten up. Illuminaris is a human, not a candlestick. You do see him, and everyone else in town looking at you all, disapprovingly for crashing your boat into the docks, destroying them. Scanlan? Um, it wasn't us, man. Mm, farts nervously. He asks the guy where the nearest house of ill repute is. Uh, I want to find some women. My wife, trying to deflect the inevitable role to have sex with the wench scene that we're sure is about to follow. What does this guy look like? He's human and holding two long sticks with torches on top. So he is a candlestick. I ask him if he has any clocks anywhere around here. Illuminaris does not look pleased with you. He says, I was told to meet you here by Axian Moonstone. Come with me. Do you always do as you're told? DM, clearly upset. You guys are not supposed to know that yet. He has to do whatever you guys tell him to do since you are all the descendants of gods. Then don't tell us that if our characters are not supposed to know something that's important about the plot, do not tell the players. DM getting even more agitated. He starts walking into town. Do you follow him? Goliath. I guess so. Gnome Bard. Um, as we walk, I look around. Uh, do I see any places to get lady favors? No. What do we see? Nothing. So, I'm suddenly struck blind. I feel around and call out to my companions to help lead me to a temple of healing to cure my blindness. The DM ignores my antics while most of the table is laughing along with me. We've hopped off the train from Bad Story and arrived at our destination of the utterly insane. The DM panicking, spilling the beans, and freaking out over the slightest misstep is just a symptom of the deep, 
underlying issues that permeate the DM's style. I don't even blame the players for failing to take the game seriously anymore. They're just gonna try and have fun with a game that makes it impossible, and I respect that. Hell, if I was in this scenario, I would be memeing too. I don't waste my time so easily. Gnome Bard. So, we follow him? What does this town have in it? Who do we meet along the way? No one. He leads you down to the town hall. Wife. Do we find that odd or creepy? No. Is this a ghost town? Is it nighttime and everyone's just asleep? No, it's daytime. Do you follow Illuminaris? Me, starting to get annoyed and realizing just how much railroading is occurring. Okay then, we went to the town hall. Illuminaris leads you into the town hall. He locks the door behind him and leaves. Goliath, who is sending me text messages on my phone apologizing for the terrible DM by this point. I call out rude much as he leaves. Do you really do that? Yeah. You don't want to do that. This guy has like plus 20 to his intimidation skill. Me, don't tell us that. Show, don't tell. Fine, he comes back and intimidates you, Goliath. You're now frightened of him. Wife, we look around the room. What do we see? The only door is locked. That is the one he walked out of. Gnome Bard. Uh, I look around. Is there anything interesting in this room? There's a weird fireplace. Okay, I cast Detect Magic. What's up with the fireplace? You're not supposed to do that. Why not? You said the fireplace is the only interesting thing in this room. But you're not supposed to know it's magical yet. Fine. Is there a chair in the room? Yes. I sit and wait for the plot. Gnome Bard. I cast Detect Magic at the fireplace. It opens a revealing hallway with a light at the end. Goliath. That is not the way Detect Magic works. He should know it's magical, but that doesn't make it open. I said it opens. Do you go in? Everyone but me and my wife go in. I'm still waiting for the plot to begin since clearly we are being railroaded hard. Goliath and I are texting back and forth, trying to somehow find some fun. Wife is also texting me saying that she does not like this and wants to leave. The DM misses all this texting because of the low candle light in the room and his total focus on what he still thinks is the most amazing story ever told. I believe it. I've personally played with worse DMs and the lack of self-awareness is a staple. I think the DM is too defensive right now to even allow himself to think that the game is failing. Just that the players are trying to ruin it with those pesky questions and rules. Maybe if the DM's really good, he'll realize at some point after the game that this has been a total failure, but I think that might be giving him too much credit. Roll post. You guys enter what appears to be a wizard's study. It's full of books. Suddenly, a woman appears in the middle with a puff of smoke. You are not supposed to be in my father's study. Get your filthy butts out of here. Sorceress. I go where I please, or I can burn the whole building down with you in it. The DM as the NPC. Are you threatening me? I'm fifth in line to the throne. Sorceress. And I'm third, so back off before I hurt you. The DM tries to correct her, but the sorceress quickly fireballs her in the face and burns the whole building down with a cackle. Uh, actually, you don't want to do that. This is a blah blah. She has over 400 HP and you will lose. Me, seeing an out to this campaign. Once again, that is not knowledge we characters would have. If Sorceress wants to TPK, I say we let her. DM. She slaps you, Sorceress, and as she does, she forces you to relive all the trauma from your childhood when your father used to beat you to death, almost. You take 5d12 psychic damage and fall prone. Sorceress, wait, my father never beat me. That is not in the backstory I have at all. We worked this out. My father was kind to me and showered me with riches. That is where all my magic rings and necklaces came from. Wife, wait, now you're telling her what her character's background is? 
Can we not make our own characters and backgrounds? DM, this is my world, and I say her father the king beats her all the time. She just doesn't remember what we talked about. What followed was a 10 minute argument between DM and Sorceress about the background and the world that they supposedly worked out together. What I got from it was the DM changed her entire background without notice and would not budge because he planned some long, drawn out redemption arc that he laid on us in detail. This is the absolute funniest but also worst part of the story. The DM has no clue what it means to be a dungeon master and completely and utterly fails to grasp even the basics of storytelling and cooperative play. Even first timer dungeon masters do not make these mistakes. So for anybody out there watching this who's maybe a little insecure about being inexperienced or not good at DMing, just take it from me, the horror story expert, that you cannot possibly fail this hard without deliberately trying. Now we're at the part where OP desperately tries to escape a game that he hates. Roll post. I, at this point, was looking for any out. Even a train wreck like this can only be experienced for so long. The humor of it was this. My wife did not want to be rude and just walk out. That was my plan. I texted my mom while they were fighting and told her to call me in five minutes, all upset so that we would have a valid reason to GTFO. My mom did not get the text for another 25 minutes. After the heated argument was settled by the DM, basically telling Sorceress that if she didn't like it, he would bump her back down to first level and take away her magic items. Me. Okay, so I guess me and wife are still back in the room that Candlestick Man locked us in. Does anyone come in to get us? NPC woman throws you out of the town hall! Illuminaris is there. Okay, so why did he lock us in the room in the first place then? Sorceress, I still want to burn down the building with that stuck up bitch still inside. You can't do that, she has plot relevance later. I ask Candlestick Man if he has seen Cogsworth again. He is not Lumiere from Beauty and the Beast. It is spelled Illuminaris. Stop ruining my world me. Well, your world is empty except for a dead boat captain, a candlestick man, and a mean woman with plot armor so thick I'm surprised she can walk. What is the plot even supposed to be? You are supposed to find Axian Moonstone. He sent you a letter. Okay. I ask candlestick man if he knows where Exxon Mobile is then. Axian Moonstone! Me. Whatever. I ask him directly where Axian Moonstone is. I would like, I would like desperately to find the plot. Illuminaris is forced to tell you that Axian Moonstone is in the capital. Okay, and how far away is that? A few days ride. Okay, can he give us horses to get there? No. Me learning the magic words, okay. I ask him directly, can he provide any transportation? Yes, he arranges for a wagon. Great. We head for the capital. Do we have any random en encounters along the way? The DM sullenly. No. This first session was supposed to be role playing only. I had no combat planned at all. Wait. So if there was no combat planned, why do we have the minis and the battle mat out? Are we just not going to get XP this session at all? I'm using milestones, and the first milestone level up isn't planned until session 4 or 5. You guys are too squishy for any of my world's encounters. Me, my wife and Goliath just sit there, dumbfounded. None of this was discussed beforehand. We all like some tactical combat in our D&D. All roleplay was not advertised at all, Gnome Bard. Uh, great, so in the capital, can we find a tavern or a place to find ladies of ill repute? DM, no, I don't have the capital finished yet. I didn't think you guys would get this far. Goliath, wait, let me get this straight. 
We had a five hour session planned for tonight and you only had the first village planned out? A village with a total of two NPCs in it? No combat encounters at all? What did you expect was going to happen? Well, you guys could have talked more with each other or engaged with the NPC and listened to their detailed backstories. You guys just made fun of their names and were rude to them. Okay, this is interesting. The DM totally deserves to be interrogated by the players for sure, but it's hard not to pity him. When you're this hopelessly bad at DMing, it feels kind of low to mock him. That being said, I'm not against the players throwing the DM's stupid behavior in his face. He completely deserves and also needs the reality check. So while for most bad game masters, I say to just slowly get better at it, don't beat yourself up, and learn with your party. But I can't say that for this guy. He doesn't even understand what it means to run the game, and needs a fundamental realignment of how he perceives D&D. At this point, my mother finally called me and gave me and my wife the chance to GTFO. Once we left, Goliath texted me and apologized again. He asked if I could have my mom call him to get him out of there, but unfortunately it was his house so he was stuck. Needless to say, we will not be back for the next session. The guy needs to write a novel, not try and run a D&D &D game. Only saving grace is I now have the story to tell. Thanks for hanging out, till next time.